awesome, awesome. Welcome to the Rise Up and Live call. I would like to welcome all of you all this morning. I know that you all had a wonderful Independence Day, but let me tell you, you need to grab a pen and a paper. It's still not too late to text your friends and let them know to jump on this call because guess what? Coach Sharita Cherie, Leon is joining us for this morning, and I want to let you know that she is a two-time, number one, best-selling author who books were on the best-sellers list for over two years straight. She is a certified Les Brown trained speaker and the protege of Les Brown. She is a relationship and business coach as well as an entrepreneur and marketing strategist. She is also the leader and the spokesperson for the Rise Up and Live call this morning, Coach Charita Leon, are you on the call this morning? Yes, 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 I am. Can you hear me, Miss Dominique? Yes, I can. Go ahead and take us away. We're ready to be inspired. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope that you are excited about this day. This is truly the day the Lord has made it. I'm going to rejoice. I don't know about you. But listen, everyone, I want to start off today by sharing a quote with you all, right? And I think that's really um, timely, timely in this in this time for us. So, the quote reads as such: "Which is the true nightmare, the horrific dream that you have in your sleep, or the dissatisfied reality that awaits you when you awake?" I'll say that again: "Which is the true nightmare, the horrific dream that you have in your sleep, or the dissatisfied reality?" that awaits you when you awake. See, many of us were excited last weekend. Last night, we saw the fireworks. We were with our family. Many went to the park. Many went to the beach, the pool, had a lot of good times, and you enjoyed yourself. And everyone had a great time. But yet this morning, many of you listening to me right this instant is on your way to work. Some of you may actually be at work. The reality has hit you. You're back to the same old routine. The fireworks of yesterday are gone. The grill has been put away. And now we're back with facing reality. It's similar to being able to go on vacation, having an amazing time in a foreign land, seeing yourself in a totally different place, enjoying yourself, yet coming back and landing to where you are from and seeing that it's back to reality. It's back to the mundane. It's back to something that you probably don't love. It's back to living a life that... You're just settling in. Reality has hit. But what is it that can take us from our reality to the dream life? What is it that can take us from the, the time that we have when we're in vacation or the weekend? Is, that, is it not enough, guys, to be able to go through Monday through Friday just to hope for a two-day weekend? Is life not more than that? The reality has hit in. But what do you do about that reality? See, the thing about reality, guys, is that it's subject to the person who is living it. Because to you, your reality may very well be to live a life where you work 40 years, 40 years you know, retire with a watch, and put your children to school, and maybe just might make it. That's not maybe your reality, and that's fine. Whereas someone else's reality is being able to get up and live and do whatever they want when they want. That's their reality. So your reality is subject to your own thinking. In fact, let me give you a definition of reality. Reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea. The world or the state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea. But this is the thing, guys, with an idea. Ideas are able to shift and change. See, it's based off of what you're learning, what you know. You know, psychology says nature and nurture. So what you were brought up in, what's in your genealogy, right? That dictates sometimes your environment. But see, I get what psychology says, but I also understand that I have the power to change things. I have the power to change my thoughts. I have the power to change my life. I have the power to speak a thing and decree it, and it has, and it has to be established. See, ideas change based off of the knowledge in which you have. So if you're feeding yourself, the same information, feeding yourself what others have done before you, then, of course, your ideas will then dictate a reality which will lead you to a life that everyone else has. But if you're able to tap into something different, to learn something different, your ideas then change. See, everything starts off first with an idea. 
the chair that you sit on, the car that you drive, the fork that you eat with. It was first an idea. Someone said, you know what, I'm tired of eating with my hands. Let me create something to use in order to, to eat with a fork. Someone said, I'm tired of dry, walking. Let me figure out how to make a car. The Wright brother said, you know what, the car is not good enough. Let's start to fly. It all started with an idea. But, see, we like to put our ideas aside because they're not realistic. <laughs> they're not realistic. But realistic or realism is based off and contingent to what you believe. Nothing is realistic if it's never been done before to the natural eye. But when you choose to tap into what is called unrealistic and use the ideas and the creativity that is within you, that is how you become realistic to yourself. My reality is totally different than somebody else's reality. Someone couldn't tell me that what I'm doing today I'd be able to do because, you know what, it would have been real, unrealistic to me back then. But in choosing to tap into my divine calling, choosing to tap into divine gifts and talents that God has put inside of me, I've been able to create a reality that I did not know. So it's not okay to, to say that something is unrealistic and allow someone else to, to bring on your parade, but it's for you to find out what is realistic for you. It's realistic for you being able to take your children out and vacation whenever they want. It's realistic for you being able to take your children and put them in the best school possible. It's realistic for you being able to be able to have charities around the world. It's realistic for you just going to work. And, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's not knock it because that is your employment, right? But you have to make sure that the life that you're living is realistic to you and not someone else's reality. See, many times we go through life and we're allowing someone else to write our story. We're allowing someone else to be the ghostwriter of our book. See, me being a writer, I understand that though someone else can take my ideas, though someone else may hear my voice and my sound, there still is a thing that they cannot write like me. They cannot fully depict my story or my ideas or my imagination the way I can. Though they may be a prolific writer, they cannot give it the voice that I give it. Yet many of us go through life, and we're not even the co-authors of it. We've allowed someone else to ghostwrite our book, ghostwrite our lives, and we just show up in each chapter, not knowing what the writer actually wrote. But see, today I need you to pick up the pen of your life and dictate how you want it to go. I need you to write out the chapters. I need you to ensure that you have the right climax, the right drama, the right, the right systems and the right character, the right sequence into how you want your story to play out because you have the opportunity to have a happily ever after, whatever that may mean to you, because, again, it's subject. But when reality hits, when you wake up today, when you're driving to work, when you're going to school, whatever it is that you're doing, you have to ask yourself, is this my reality? Or is there more? The mere fact that the majority of you on this line are on here this morning is because you know there's more. You know that there's something that you should be doing. Whether you are an entrepreneur, or maybe you had to change your career path. Maybe you start off being a lawyer, but you know that's not what you want to do. Maybe you want to be in the, in the field of medicine. Whatever it is, you have to figure out what is your reality. And then what is it that you must do to get you to that place? Because you see, the quote by Mr. John Akala is so strong, guys. Because which is true? Which is a true nightmare? The horrific dream that you have in your sleep or the dissatisfied reality that awaits you when you awake. See, that is so strong. Because see, it's one thing to fall asleep and dream about something like, oh, my gosh. But then when you wake up every day and are dissatisfied, that right there is nothing more horrific than that. I, I myself, would rather be in glory than live a life that's dissatisfied, to live a life that has no purpose, to live a life where there is no impact. There is no thing in this world that can compare to living a life that you know that God has put you on this earth to do. There are people waiting for you. And it's not just a matter of the nice things, but it's a matter of the call and the people that await you, the freedom that you will allow someone else to have. See, it's not enough to wake up every day and just do and play life safe. No, 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 no. There are risks 
that must be taken to be great. There are risks. There's a work ethic that has to be taken in order for you to live a life that people dream of. So this is the thing, guys, going back to the idea. The idea is what you're feeding yourself. There are people today that, you know, in fact, most millionaires today are not millionaires that came from silver spoons. No, they were self-made. So that means there was something else that they had to feed themselves, another idea that they had to adapt in order to go out and create the life that they have. Because if not, they would have lived the same life that their parents and parents' parents had done before them. But they picked up a new idea. So what would happen today if you picked up a new idea? What would happen today if you saw things differently? What would happen today if you said, you know what, I can and I will, therefore I must? What would happen if you did pick up a new idea to create a new reality? See, my reality today is totally different than what it was before. And my reality is not only different than what it was before. My reality is different than anyone else that lived before me in my family. So though others may have had a past and it worked for them, great. But my reality is different. Who are you allowing to tell you what is real and what is not? Because I can guarantee you, <laughs> when the Wright brothers said they were making a plane, somebody said that's not realistic. You're crazy. It'll never work. But they were wise enough to know that if I can think it, if I had the idea, then surely I can make it come to pass. Surely it can actually happen. See, the mere fact, guys, that you have an idea or a picture of what your life can actually look like is the very proof that it, it, it can exist. God is not going to haunt you and hurt you by giving you this idea and a picture of a life and a vision only for you not to be able to live it, only for you to see it in your mind and not for it to come to fruition. No, absolutely not. But see, that same book that I live by says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, guys, where do ideas come from? They come from your thinking, right? So then if you're able to reprogram and think differently, that is what you become. So if I'm constantly thinking about prosperity, prosperity and prosperous is what I must be. If I'm constantly thinking about health, healthy is what I must be. If I'm constantly thinking about changing lives, changing lives is what I must do. If I'm constantly thinking about hurt, pain, anguish, depression, how my life sucks, then guess what? That's what I'm going to have. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The thoughts will create your ideas, and your ideas will create your actions and support your life. So what is realistic to you this morning? Or what must you do to become the life, the person that has the life that is realistic to you, the dream life? To so somebody right now, they're superstars, right? They're celebrities. That seems real, unrealistic, but they're living it. There's a basketball player right now living in a mansion, living it, and living a life that has nothing to do with money or lack. But to somebody else, someone said that's unrealistic. There's somebody else right now living a life where they travel literally around the world with no real address, and all they do is help people. But someone said that was unrealistic. Someone said it was unrealistic. <laughs> Someone said it was unrealistic to create a ship that had everything you needed in there, so much so to the point where you forgot you were on the water, not on land, that had a skating board, that had, you know, sky, um, 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 you know climbing on the mountains and, and, and being able to dance and, and sing and do whatever you want. Someone forgot that, that that was unrealistic at one point in time. But they did it. So this morning... I want you to create a new idea for yourself. Tap into why God has put you on this life, in this life, and in this world, and what your purpose is, and how you can go out to live a divine life. Seize the opportunities that come before you, whether that be network marketing, creating a business, going out and become a, someone that lives a life of philanthropy, whatever that thing may be for you, do it. Seize it. And when someone shows you an opportunity, be open. You see, one of the biggest reasons why many don't live a life of their dreams is because they're not open. They're so shut into what others have said and what others have shown before them that they can't fathom seeing themselves somewhere else. But this morning, I want you to stretch yourself, get an idea, and seize the opportunity. Because many of you on this line have been presented an opportunity from a company. Seize it. 
With that being said, Ms. Dominique, take the call away. Wow. Wow. That was totally, totally amazing. Listen, guys, 